Shalom, shalom, and welcome to my session, Hebraic Motherhood. My name is Ebony. I am the wife of Elder Yawanathan Yahawada. He is one of the elders of Derekakad in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We have six beautiful children together. I have been a full-time housewife for the past 10 years. And as my time as a homemaker, I received my certification as a lactation counselor. And what I do part-time is assist new mothers in the beginning of their breastfeeding journey. So if they have any questions or concerns, I am able to support them in that capacity. And I am also able to help them meet their unique breastfeeding goals. So that work is very fulfilling to me, especially since I am a breastfeeding mother. I breastfed all of my children, and that bond is so very special and helped me to choose this career path as a lactation counselor, and I'm grateful to be able to hold space with women in this way. So today we will be discussing Hebraic motherhood. So what is Hebraic motherhood? It's understanding and exhibiting basic biblical principles as the keeper of the home, relying solely on what the word says for us to do and as mother and as we are mother and our children. So Do what the word says for us to do as we're mothering our children simultaneously. Let's begin by discussing the role that the mother plays in her home. It's very crucial that mothers are with their children as often as possible. Research shows that children who are brought up in a home with a parent that is um, a stay-at-home parent tends to have a natural level of confidence in oneself despite religious or any ethnic ethnic backgrounds. So one may ask, well, what does that stat have to do with scriptures and me being a mother? So let's look in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verses 4 to 7. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, The Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk to them when you sit in the house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. We can see that Abba Yah is trying to make a very clear point here. He commanded us to teach our children diligently in all aspects of their life. He wants us as mothers to be present. As I've dove into understanding parenting more over the course of 10 years, I have taken several parenting classes, read parenting books, attended parenting conferences, and here I am speaking on... Uh, parenting at this conference understanding how to mother my child was very important and was placed on the forefront of my mind for almost a decade I thank Abba Yah for putting his spirit on me to understand this role better and over the years of learning what it means to be an exceptional mother one concept kept coming back to me childhood development so when you learn about childhood development through parenting classes and seminars they teach you that it involves learning about the biological psychological and emotional changes that occur in human beings between birth and the conclusion of adolescence that basically is saying that understanding the changes your child goes through from birth to about five years old Has anyone ever told you how fascinating the uh, child's brain is? The early years of a child's life are very important to later health and development. And they teach that one of the main reasons is how fast the brain 
grows starting from before birth and continuing into early childhood. Although the brain continues to develop and change into adulthood, the first eight years can build a foundation for strong future learning, health, and life success. I don't believe that the father had had me learn that information just to hope and pray that he protects my children and my children's children's to come. Understanding this information fully could change our lives substantially. As nurturing mothers, it is our jobs to bring up our children the way that Yah commands during those precious years. It's not by chance that the data shows that the age stops at age eight and as being the impressionable impressionable age as children get older they start to come into themselves everything that was poured into that child before birth to age eight will come through everything we did and everything that we missed i once heard jada pinkett smith jokingly say that she's accepting the fact that her children are going to need therapy now i knew what she meant by what she said but on the other hand I couldn't accept that level of failure it is our job to take our calling as a servant of Yah very seriously and at, especially as a mother you are on the front lines of the war against our heavenly father what's also interesting to me is those years are the ages that our children want to be closest to us they fall they want mommy they draw a pretty picture. They want to show mommy. They lost a tooth. They want to give it to mommy. Yah has created a natural bond between mother and child. And that bond has a lifelong lasting effect on her children and on her children's children. When I read the book of Deuteronomy and it talks about how we're supposed to be with our children in all of these facets of life. It says while we're sitting in our homes and walking by the way. I believe that has a strong correlation as to how we are to nurture our children and how we are to be around our children frequently and often so that we can be sure that we're the ones providing the safe space for them to explore all the parts of their development because it's inevitable that they're going to go through these certain milestones and developmental stages and <clears throat> being knowledgeable and having that understanding of knowing about childhood development but you'll also be able to see it for yourself. So when your child is going through a particular milestone, knowing them ahead of time, you'll look at them and be like, oh, wow, so we're going through this. And it provides a level of ease to parenting. Um, it helps you to relax because you're ahead of it and you can speak with them on that level and that's what our children need they need a relaxed mom that's well tempered and balanced so this is a it's a lot of work <laughs> i know it is i am not going to lie to you it takes an extreme level of patience to assist your child through various developmental stages and it just takes practice with yourself and with learning and understanding and then just applying it all. So ideally, you would want to be a homemaker. That's when you really get to be with your children in this very intimate space, this very vulnerable space. And you're able to monitor your children's behavior, notice things, and then you can fix it. And if we are not yet in this stage in our child's life, uh, this still holds true for that mother that isn't around uh, to cause her to have more due diligence with observing and monitoring her child's development, making sure that she is consistently examining her child's behavior and looking for influences that you are not instilling in them, being sure that those basic biblical principles that you will want them to hold near and dear to their hearts are things like honesty and being kind. Those two things are just really basic biblical pr principles that a lot of adults lack today. So where can you go to get more information on understanding about childhood development? 
I'm honestly a fan of taking parenting classes. Um, To your surprise, most parenting classes really do have those basic biblical principles. Um, I would always joke with my husband and say the only thing they're missing today in my class was a couple references uh, from the scriptures. So, you know, those are great resources to use. Um, My second recommendation would be to connect with a mentor of mine. Her name is Elysia Rivers. Um, I mentioned her earlier. She is truly an expert in her field and she also is biblically based and has respect for motherhood like no other woman I have ever met um, you can also, uh, you can find her on Facebook and Instagram at Feminine Motherhood. She would also be a great resource for book rec- recommendations as well. But lastly, another place where we can learn about childhood development is by looking at ourselves. I've recently learned that almost 100% of our parenting style comes from our relationship with our own mother. It goes back to how we were mother, what happened in our childhood that would affect our relationship with our children, taking a look inward about ourselves. Where are we lacking on our walk? Where are we lacking with our relationship with the father? And from there, Yah would really open you up to your true nature of the relationship with your children the more and more you draw closer to him. And you understand how he wants you to change and how he wants you to operate. And then you know how it feels to mess up and to fall short. And you know how it feels to want to change in your life and you keep trying and trying. How different is this than the relationship with your own child? How much they want to please us, how much they, what they want to do, what's right and how remorseful they are. When they make a mistake and they make mommy sad and they say, oh, I didn't like that. You know, you say, I didn't like that, honey. And you can see how disappointed uh, they are um, that they hurt mommy. Having that relationship with the father brings a lot of perspective. And it's very a, hum, a, a very humbling experience because then you're like, who am I? How could I not ex- extend that same level of grace to my own child who was just trying to figure it out, right? Does that sound familiar, you know? So looking at ourselves and being honest with ourselves um, at uh, for where we are in our walk and understanding how profound of a change we can make in our homes and in our communities by extending this level of grace uh, towards one another. The more and more I dug into childhood development, I understood my child better and I began to understand myself better. So I'm looking at my child and I'm asking, why are you doing that? Or, (laughs) you know, what, what are you doing? And I look at myself and I'm like, hmm, you know what? I do that. I do that exact thing. Um, so when you go into your community and you're working on yourself and you're extending grace to your child and you're extending grace to yourself, then you begin to extend that same grace to your sisters. And you can begin to see that part in them that they need to work on, right? You can see that they aren't talking like the adult version of themselves. You would now be talking to the child version of themselves. And having that understanding allows another extension of grace to our sisters, knowing that you're just working through it too. You're working on you. You're in that space and time that it hasn't been fully examined. You haven't gone through the fire um, of feeling bad, like, oh my gosh, I feel so bad for doing this. Yet, so that you can strive to do better. That person hasn't made it there yet. So now you're like the person that needs my love, my compassion, my patience, all those things that I have been working on myself and with my child. And now I'm able to go within my community. So operating in that nurturing spirit that Yah has ordained us to be. 
I would like to leave you all with three takeaways from my session today. The first takeaway would be that ministry starts in the home. A woman who has her home in order can definitely go into the community to help other sisters to get their homes in order. Second, for you to draw closer to the Father. The closer to the Father you are, the better mother you will be. And lastly, be honest with yourself. You should always be examining yourself on ways that you can be better because then will you be able to be humbled so that you can extend grace and compassion to others who are falling short. So thank you so much for joining me, uh, for speaking at my first conference. Um, I hope that you all enjoy the rest of the speakers. May God bless. Shalom.